So if you wanted to open an investment account, how do you pick the right one for your needs? Now, everyone seems to know that it's a great idea to invest, but there's very little advice out there on how to actually go about doing it. And in particular, how do you choose the right investment account? Um, so in this video, we're going to go over the four different types of accounts, all the way from the full service down to the do it yourself. Uh, we'll cover that and see which one is the right one for you. All this coming right up. Hey there, this is Tom Young with Jernex, bringing you the tips and tools you need to master personal finance. Today I'm joined by Jeff in the background there, so you'll see him cut in and out. And today we're going to take a look at the four different types of investment accounts and figure out which one you might want to open. So if you're watching this video, you're probably looking to open an investment account to um, put your savings to work. And there are so many investment accounts, uh, broker dealers out there. In fact, there are 3,600 registered broker dealers in the United States. And so it's really hard to pick exactly which ones you'd need. And so to narrow down the field, we're actually going to take a look at the four different types of investment accounts that you can open all the way from the full service ones down to the do it yourself to get a sense of what's out there and just a review of um, what might be right for you. The first of this is the do it for me. And this isn't a bad thing. It's just like a way that you might get a contractor to do work for you or like a tax accountant to do your taxes. Actually, if you have a complicated financial life, it actually can make sense for you to hire somebody to help you out. So the do it for me type of investment accounts actually are broken down into two different types. The first one is the full service bank. And these are actually commercial banks that you actually might already bank with. So this might be Bank of America, Chase, um, even the investment banks like Goldman and JP Morgan have these. Now, most of the US banks actually do run an advisory service, but the downside to them is that they tend to be reserved for high net worth people and tend to have relatively high minimum investment requirements. So for example, we have UBS, Wells Fargo, and these are starting at 100K. And you have JP Morgan at all, at all the way up to, uh, let's say, $10 million. And these numbers can change over time. This is just what's the most uh, recent ones that I could find. Now, don't let these numbers turn you off because if you already have, let's say, a, an existing relationship or mortgage even with one of these banks, they might be willing to lower their minimums because they're really looking for this for the long term. Because in a sense, you do get for what you pay for. They really do roll out the red carpet. But for the rest of everyone who doesn't necessarily have $100,000 to invest, quite yet, um, you also have another option, and that's called the full service financial advisor. And these are independent advisors who are happy to work with smaller investors. And their fees, um, they're broken down into two different types. You have the fees on a per hour basis, and generally they don't have a minimum required investment. Uh, they'll just work with you on a by hour, or they also do a percentage of assets. And so let's say you have $50,000 invested with them. They'll just take, let's say, a 1% or 2% cut of that every year and just give you ongoing financial advice. Um, and these actually are pretty good investment accounts as well because they will help you. They will actually open the accounts for you um, and walk you through every step of the way with how to invest, um, what you should be investing in, and how much you should be saving. So this isn't even just about picking the right stocks. It's about knowing what percentage of your income you have to save so that you have enough saved for retirement. Um, and some of these examples are like Edward Jones, Ameriprise, Northwestern Mutual. And also you have a group on the bottom there called uh, Independent Registered Investment Advisors. And those are kind of like us at Jernex here, where um, these are companies that aren't related, aren't related to a larger group, and they basically work by themselves. So remember, if you're not quite comfortable investing by yourself quite yet, or if your situation is just really complex, it can actually make sense to hire somebody to help you out. And you know, actually there's um, a lot of these advisors will give um, free consultations and so definitely make use of those as well. Keep in mind, they won't be able to give you direct advice until you have a signed contract, but they can at least start pointing you in the right direction for what you're looking for. So the second type of account that you can open is called the DIY investing. And those are actually broken in, up into two different types. There's the online only, and then there's the hybrid investment accounts. And what I mean by hybrid is actually it's a cross between both the online only and the financial advisor model, where you can pick and choose which one you want. So these are actually great for people who are comfortable self-investing, but also want the option where if you run into a problem, let's say you really know how to invest stocks, but you might not know how to do commodities or bonds or even like you don't quite know what the tax codes are for saving for, um, let's say, your kid's college. So this option is actually really flexible because it gives you that flexibility of low trading costs. But if you do need help, you can always just raise your hand and ask. So some examples are the big guys, uh, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, and all these over here. 
Um, and in fact, this is such an important group of, um, of investment accounts that we actually do a separate video to review the top one so you can pick out which one is best for you. Um, that's actually going to come at the end of this video. Um, so just keep watching and click on the play button after the end of the video. Now, the benefit to these online hybrid accounts is that it is DIY. Um, and so online trading is actually really cheap. It's only five to seven dollars per trade because you'd only pay for what you use. And so if you're not using a full fledged financial advisor, like unlike the um, full service models, you're only paying for that online trading part. And that's great. Also, they, these companies tend to have a ton of online resources uh, to help you learn how to invest. Um, and their libraries are phenomenal. Uh, one in particular that I'd want to point out is uh, TD Ameritrade. Their Thinkorswim online library is wonderful for people, if, for people who want to learn how to trade, for example. Um, if for people who want to learn how to invest, Vanguard actually has a lot of great materials out there. So it really depends on what exactly you're looking for. And again, I'd really suggest you to uh, watch the video on hybrid brokers, um, the online brokerages, if you uh, want to learn more about these. So what are the benefits for online hybrid accounts? Uh, the big one is that there's no need to change uh, accounts. There's no need to open a new account if your life situation changes and all of a sudden you find that you actually do need a financial advisor. And this actually happens a lot, especially like if you're starting off um, as a fresh graduate in college and you're just saving up, your life is relatively uncomplicated, and then you might find that you're saving for a house or that you have a kid or two kids or um, what have you. And then all of a sudden you have so many moving parts that you end up needing you know, a little bit of help as well. And that's, these companies are great for that. Uh, the downside of online hybrid accounts is that they tend to have the jack of all trades problem. And so they don't necessarily excel in one particular point. Like if you want to do a lot of trading, these are actually not the cheapest places that you can do it. Or if you want the, an advisor say, who will follow every step of your financial plan, um, then the full service ones actually are better because they will help you monitor your bank accounts and your overall wealth as well. Not just the particular areas that you might be focusing on in investments. Now, the third type of investment account that you can open is called the trading account. And those are split into two actually very different types of accounts, the low cost online and the trading platform. Now, the low cost online platforms are for people who are very comfortable with investing because they're low cost. And in fact, some of them are, uh, in, are commission free. And so you can actually trade without having to pay anything. And these are great, but they do tend to have fewer resources. Again, this is just uh, where a company decides to um, emphasize. So when you have something that just charges basically zero commissions, they aren't necessarily putting that same resources into consumer education because they just don't have the overhead to do it. Um, and there are some examples like Robinhood, Wisebanyan, M1 Finance, and Acorn. Now, these options are really great if you enjoy doing mobile trading um, because a lot of them actually, like Robinhood, did start as mobile apps, basically. Um, my word of caution as a financial advisor is just make sure that you're studying these companies first before you buy and trade, uh, because there you have it. Most people spend 10 to 20 hours planning a vacation, but it's really easy to just all of a sudden buy $5,000 worth of stock in a blink of an eye. So just make sure you're doing the research before you start um, playing around with stocks. Um, and just as a tip, don't use mobile trading as a casino. It's really, unless, unless that's, unless you're doing it just for fun. So one question that I actually do get a lot about these low cost or zero commission um, companies is how exactly do they make money? And so we're just gonna spend a couple seconds to take a look at that. So there are actually three ways that they do it, which is interest on cash in customer accounts. Um, so instead, like if you deposited, let's say $10,000 with Schwab, they're actually gonna credit you with the savings in that, uh, whereas say Robinhood might uh, hold on to that. Uh, the second one is margin interest and margin lending. And the third one is actually the, probably the biggest one. It's payment for order flow. So what exactly is payment for order flow? And that's when companies sell your orders to market makers or high frequency traders, basically. So instead of getting the absolute best price at the market, you might actually get something that is like one cent or two cents off. You generally won't notice the difference, especially with smaller trades at like 100 or 200 shares. And it's only when you're doing a lot of trading that you're eventually going to notice the, um, the spread is maybe not as good. And so let's go on to the second type of trading platform for the people who actually want to trade um, a, a much larger amount, let's say more than 500 trades a month. Uh, you're going to probably go with opening a trading platform as an investment account. And these are completely legitimate as well. Um, some financial advisors will really 
turn people uh, pull people away from um, doing these kind of trading, uh, day trading basically. But if you have some kind of insight or special knowledge into it, I say definitely go for it. It's definitely an investment if you know how to, um, if you know the underlying business behind it. So these are great for expenses because you, the commissions are really low already at one cent and you actually earn interest from the cash in the account, unlike some places like Robinhood. And also I want to highlight this last part over here, receive interest from margin lending. And that really means that if you hold on to a stock that's heavily shorted, um, a lot of these um, investment accounts will actually credit you the interest that the shorts have to uh, pay to borrow those particular shares. Um, a lot of other accounts won't do that, but trading accounts like this generally do. Now, some examples of trading platforms include interactive brokers, E-Trade, TradeStation, and companies like that. So if you are planning to trade a lot, these could be the right investment accounts for you. Now, the fourth type of investment account you can open, I call alternative strategies. And a lot of these here are actually using um, some kind of tax advantage for investment accounts. Um, so what are exactly these guys? They're called self-directed custodians. And uh, let's take a quick step back. Most custodians, so the other three that we've visited so far are they direct the investment. So if you're going to open a Fidelity account, you can open, uh, you can invest in whatever Fidelity says is fine for you to invest in, but you can't invest outside of that. Like you can't use Fidelity and say, hey, Fidelity, I want you to buy a house for me. Like they just won't do that. But with self-directed custodians, they will actually do that for you. Now, the reason you would go invest in a self-directed custodian is because with IRA rules, uh, you can't actually hold the money until you're 59 and a half. This is a retirement account, which is why like a 401k is always going to be at a Vanguard or a Fidelity or something like that, and as opposed to just being um, given to you as a, uh, as a bank account, say, because you're not necessarily able to touch that money until you're 59 and a half. Uh, it's the same thing with self-directed um, with these self-directed custodians, they will hold it in your name until you reach that point or, um, or you pay the 10% penalty for an early withdrawal. Now, another thing about these self-directed custodians is that they can invest in such a wide variety of things, anything that's allowed by the IRS. And it's the, the range is so wide, it's actually easier to take a look at the things that you cannot invest in. And that involves collectibles tangible personal property, life insurance, your primary residence, and derivatives with unlimited downside. There are a couple others to the list as well, but these are the major ones. It basically, if um, you can put it in your basement, uh, the IRS probably won't let you um, write that as a, as a, or put that in your IRA. So like wine or artwork probably won't make the cut. The other thing that you want to keep in mind with self-directed custodians is that you probably want to hire a financial advisor or a tax accountant first because um, you don't want to run afoul of uh, tax laws. Um, you don't want to get audited by the IRS and find that something that you've invested in is not legal for IRA accounts. So uh, something that's a great example is, some, is like Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. Uh, right now, the IRS doesn't have any rules against um, investing in them, even though they are not necessarily in the spirit of the law. And so a question of whether you can or can't use their IRA to invest in Bitcoin is still kind of up in the air. So here are some examples of self-directed custodians. Um, these are some of the larger ones in the United States, um, and most of their names aren't as recognizable. They tend to be a lot smaller. And again, it really does help to find um, an investment professional to help with these things. So there you have it, the four different types of investment accounts. Um, to look at. And if you enjoyed this video, take a look at the next one where we actually review the top hybrid brokers, uh, the low cost online investment accounts uh, to figure out which ones are best for you. So my name is Tom Young and I'll see you next time.